Some learners to form to chemistry. Today learners, I would like to teach you uh, some chemistry here in form 2. And we are going to look at the reactivity series of metals. Reactivity series of metals and uh, this reactivity series will also show the position of carbon. Lana, look at this. The position of carbon. Carbon is here. And hydrogen in the reactivity series, though they are non metals. So, the reactivity series, Lana, you know it starts with potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, zinc, iron, tin, lead. Then you have hydrogen followed by copper, silver, gold, and platinum. This is a very important series. You should put it in mind, starting all the way from potassium to platinum. Potassium is the most reactive learner. Potassium is the most reactive element there. Yeah? And platinum is the least reactive. So learner, you should also be able to master their symbols. Here they are potassium K, sodium Na, and so on and so forth, all the way to platinum, which is Pt. So, Lana, I can show you a song here, I can teach you a song uh, that you can sing to remember this reactivity series. Although I know you've made some statements, some sentences, which, are, which help you to remember the series. So, it goes like this. Potassium, sodium, and calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, zinc, iron, tin, and lead, hydrogen, copper, silver, gold, platinum. That is the tune liner. Maybe we can go through it together. We go through it. Potassium, sodium and calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, zinc, iron, tin and lead, hydrogen, copper, silver, gold, platinum. You can as well use the symbols, learn and we practice on this. Uh, listen to this. K N A C A M G A L C Z N F E S N P B H C U A G A U P T P T. Yes, Lana, go and practice on that. It will help you. Okay, using these uh, series, learn reactivity series, uh, let us look at these questions. We see how we can use it. We can use the reactivity series. We have a question here. The question is, what happens, Lana, what happens when a mixture, look at this, when a mixture of carbon and some metal oxides, some metal oxides are heated? Mm -hmm. You are given A, carbon and copper 2 oxide B, carbon and iron 3 oxide line. Let us look at the first one and we even write their chemical equations. So, you are told A, carbon line is mixed with copper 2 oxide. We first write the word equation like that. Carbon is mixed with copper two oxide and the mixture is heated. What will be the products? You put an R. Remember the word equation line. Mm -hmm. So carbon and copper two oxide are mixed together. So what happens is that Carbon, if you look at it, and copper, where are they in the reactivity series, Lana? Carbon is here, I hope you can see it, and copper is down here. So carbon is more reactive than 
copper and therefore it will be able carbon will be able to remove oxygen from the oxide of, of copper it will be able to remove oxygen from copper to oxide so now we are seeing that carbon being uh, higher in the reactivity cells than copper will remove this oxygen from copper to oxide it will combine that oxygen to form maybe i can write here carbon four oxide gas land it forms carbon four oxide carbon is oxidized by that then what remains is what it is copper so copper two oxide lana is reduced to copper look at that Therefore, land. maybe you can use now the word, uh, the chemical equation. Carbon, the symbol is what land? The symbol for carbon is C. Remember the symbols? Then plus what? Copper 2 oxide. How do you write the formula of copper 2 oxide land? Let us practice here. Copper 2 oxide. Like that. How do we come up with the formula? You talk of copper is Cu. This substance is made up of copper and oxygen. Copper is Cu, oxygen is 2. What is the valency of copper? The valency of copper is this one, Lana. The one put in brackets here, the Roman number put in brackets, refers to the valency of the element which is in front of it. And therefore, this is the valency of copper 2. What is the valency for oxygen, Lana? I know you have dealt with that table of valences. The valency for oxygen is 2. You reduce them or you simplify by 2, 1, by 2, 1. And therefore, Lana, you end up with what? C-U-O. You don't need to write a 1 there, a 1 there. C-U-O. So, you come and fix it here. C-U-O. This is the copper 2 oxide. Then you put an arrow line. What do you get? You get copper. How do you write copper? Copper is Cu. Then plus what? Carbon 4 oxide line. You come and practice here. Carbon 4 oxide formula. This compound is made up of carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen line. This valency, the valency of carbon is 4. This number here, Lana, again, it refers to the valency of this one. So, 4. The valency for oxygen, Lana, is 2. Simplify by dividing by 2. By 2 gives you 2. By 2 gives you 1. Cross multiply, like that. So, carbon goes with 1. Oxygen goes with 2. So, the formula for carbon, to, for, sorry, for oxide is CO. True. So if you look at this one, Lana, you can see it clearly that carbon removes oxygen from copper 2 oxide to form carbon 4 oxide. And copper 2 oxide now changes to copper or it is reduced. We see it is reduced to copper. From here, Lana, all you need to know is now to balance. Check on the balancing of the atoms. You have one carbon here. Look at it, Lana. One carbon atom, one carbon atom there. Those ones are balanced. One copper. Look at this. One copper, one copper. These are balanced. We go to oxygen. One oxygen here, but on this side we have two. One oxygen, on this side we have two. So we need to put a two. Where do we put it? We put it in front of the formula line. Not here. You come and put your two in front of the formula of the compound which is here and therefore you talk of uh, you talk of two oxygen two oxygen you go back to it line you want to confirm whether it is balanced so you have one carbon one carbon okay you have two copper atoms when, when you put your two there it multiplies everything here so you have two copper atoms on this side and on this side line you have one you have one here and therefore you come and fix a two where you have one fix the two so that you need two copper atoms two copper atoms 
Then you talk of two oxygen atoms, two oxygen atoms. And therefore our equation is balanced the line. Then you come now and put the states. Carbon is a solid. Copper two oxide line is a solid. Then copper is a metal, so it's a solid. This is a gas. And that is uh, the equation of that reaction. We go to part B, learn. Part B. You are told carbon, what happens when carbon uh, is mixed with iron 3? Look at this. Iron 3 oxide. What happens? What happens is this. You first look at carbon and iron in the reactivity series. Look at this. Carbon and iron. Carbon is up here, Lana. I hope you can see. And where is iron? Iron is here. So carbon is more reactive than iron. And therefore, it will be able to remove oxygen from a compound of iron 3 oxide. So learn what we are saying is this. Carbon being high, high in the reactivity cell is than iron, it is able to remove oxygen from uh, this compound and therefore it forms what? Let me write it here, it forms carbon 4 oxide gas. Then plus what? What you are left with after oxygen is removed is iron metal. Look at that line. So, how do you write the chemical formula? Chemical formula, Lana, chemical formula, carbon AC, iron 3 oxide. How do we write it? Let me come here and we practice. Iron 3 oxide, Lana. Look at this. Iron is Fe. You should master these symbols. Oxygen is O. The valency for iron is this one here. The valency for iron is 3, Lana. 3. And then oxygen is 2. Cross multiply, Lana. Cross multiply. Cross multiply. Cross multiply, you get Fe2. There. And oxygen 3. This is the formula of iron 3 oxide. The formula of iron 3 oxide. You come and fix it here, Lana. Fe, look at this. Fe2 or 3. Like that. You fix your arrow, Lana. You talk of what? It forms what? Iron. Look at this. Iron. Fe. Plus what? Carbon 4 oxide. We have practiced it here. And therefore it is CO2. CO2 Lana. Then we balance. One carbon atom is here, Lana, on the left. One carbon atom there. Balanced. Two ion atoms. Two. Hmm? Two ion atoms. On this side we have one. Come and fix your two there, Lana. Two. There. Then from there you go to oxygen. There are three here and on this side there are two. Three and two. Fix a two here on the where you have the odd number. Fix a two there. So that now you have two times three. You end up with six oxygen atoms. Three times two. Six oxygen atoms. If you come to this side, you have two oxygen atoms now. So you fix a three. Look at that. You fix a three so that you end up with six oxygen atoms, six oxygen atoms land. I hope you understand that. Once you do that line, it is not enough. Go back and confirm whether everything is balanced. One carbon, three carbon atoms land. Look at this, three carbon atoms. Come and fix a three there. So we talk of three carbon atoms, three carbon atoms. Uh, here we talk of four, look at this, four iron atoms, two times two, four iron atoms. Here we have two, so you convert this two to four. Look at that, Lana, four there. So you talk of four iron atoms, four iron atoms, six oxygen atoms, six oxygen atoms, and it is balanced. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you come and put the states, go and practice on that, Lana. So, 
you come and put the state. Carbon is a solid. Iron 3 oxide liner is a solid. Uh -huh. Iron metal is a solid. And this is a gas. That is how we uh, we do what? We use the reactivity series liner. Here, carbon is behaving as a reducing agent. Reducing agent. Reducing the metal oxides of metals that are below it. Reducing the metal oxides of metals that are below it. So, hydrogen liner, another point, is also a reducing agent. It is able to remove oxygen. For example, from copper to oxide, it will remove oxygen. So, Lana, go and practice on a reactivity series. Master it. Master the corresponding symbols and you should be able to apply it when it comes to such questions. God bless you, Lana, as you practice chemistry.